Please rise. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God that I've chosen to share with you this morning is taken from the gospel reading that Pastor Lee just read for you. I share with you today at verse 11. Jesus says, Everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but whoever humbles himself will be exalted. This is the word of God before us this morning. Please be seated. People love today to hear about the lifestyles of the rich and famous. They love to imagine what it might be like to be rich and famous. Now, the super rich people, they love to have these extravagant parties. And at their parties, they always have one place. It's called the place for the very important people, the VIPs. And it's separated from the other people at the party. And everyone is always wanting to be in that section with the very important people. Well, you know, people have been competing to be the most famous and to be the best for a long time. And that's why it's so easy for us to be able to relate to the Word of God before us here today. One day, Jesus went to eat at the home of a prominent, of a famous Pharisee. And Jesus was watching to see where the people were sitting at the dinner table. Now, think about this. Jesus is invited to the home of this, of this famous Pharisee. Now, we don't know why Jesus was invited, but he was there. Now, the Pharisees, as you remember, they were a prominent religious group in Jesus' day. They were the legal experts who made sure that everyone followed the Old Testament laws and traditions. Now, this particular Pharisee, who was having a, a dinner party, he, he was very famous. And all the people who were invited to this dinner party, they're trying to get the best seat next to their host, next to the famous Pharisee. They wanted to be famous too, didn't they? Now, think about how crazy this is. Here Jesus, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is there, and the famous Pharisee's there, and the people would rather be around the famous Pharisee than around Jesus. It's kind of crazy, isn't it? The Pharisee, he could offer them an ego boost, or maybe even a fleeting sense of importance. But Jesus could offer them eternal life in heaven. He could offer them eternal peace in heaven. Jesus had to be both amused and sad here. The first thing we learn today is that Jesus knew that the desire for status, the desire to be the best, is rooted in fear. There was an American doctor who attended a medical school in Switzerland. And he found out that the Swiss teachers and the Swiss students, they believed in cooperation rather than competition. And so there were no grades in the classes. Everyone was a pass or a fail. There was no the, being the first or the second place in the class. And the Americans that were at this university, they, they didn't know what to do. They thought it was all some kind of trick because they were so used to working hard to be the best. Jesus knows that people's need to be the best is rooted in fear. They're afraid they might be left out. They're afraid that they might not be good enough. Now, fortunately, Jesus gave us here the cure for fear. We find this cure in a parable, in a story that Jesus told. Jesus said here, when someone invites you to a wedding feast, to a wedding reception, don't try to sit in the best places because someone more important than you might come to that wedding feast and the wedding host may say, get up and let this other person sit here. And then, feeling very humiliated, 
you'll, you'll walk away and everybody will see you. But Jesus says, rather, when you're invited to the big wedding reception, sit in a, in a lower seat. And then when the wedding host comes, he may say to you, come and sit up here close to me. And then you'll be honored in front of all the wedding guests. And then Jesus finishes by saying, that's the way it is. Anyone who exalts himself will be humbled. And whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Wow. The second thing we learn here today is that it's humility that frees us from fear. Putting other people's needs before our needs frees us from fear. Honoring others instead of just honoring yourself frees you from fear. Rob Willer, a sociologist at Stanford University, he created a game in which the players could either choose to support one another or they could compete against one another. He found out that those who chose to support one another had a higher status among the rest of the group. Now, I know humility can be risky. Sometimes people will take advantage of you, and sometimes you might miss out on some worldly reward. But there's great joy that comes from being humble like Jesus was here on this earth. Back in 1989, a couple by the name of Reb and Jackie, they were going to get ready to open up a restaurant in North Carolina. Now, the night before they were ready to open up this restaurant, Hurricane Hugo hit. And many of the businesses and the homes were destroyed, but miraculously, their restaurant was not damaged. Well, they decided to thank God for that blessing by offering free food to people. And so they started out by offering free meals to the police and to the first responders. Well, people heard about this. And they started to give them food to give away. And it wasn't long before they were giving free meals to everyone. They ended up serving over 16,000 free meals to people in their community. And they felt great about doing this. Wow. There is great joy that comes from serving others. There's an amazing feeling of joy and satisfaction that comes from serving others. You see, the third thing that we learn here today is that life is not a competition, but life is a celebration. Jesus ends the parable here by saying, when you have a dinner party, don't just invite your family or your friends over. Because they will probably want to repay you by inviting you to their dinner party. But Jesus says, when you have a dinner party, invite all kinds of people. Because he said, you're going to be blessed. Because even though some of those people may not be able to in invite you over to their house and pay you back, he says, your reward, Jesus says, is going to be great in heaven. What a difference it would be if people did that today, wouldn't it? Life would be one big celebration. There wouldn't be any prejudice. There would be no worry about being the best. That's because where the love of God is, there is joy. Henry Nouwen, he was a famous priest and professor and author. He was very famous, but he left all of this to go to work at a place for disadvantaged people. He wanted there the disadvantaged people to learn about Jesus and to be in heaven. Well, while he was there, he ran into a young boy named Trevor. Now, one time Trevor had to go in a hospital, and Henry was going to go visit him at the hospital. Well, the hospital administrators heard about that, and they were going to have a big luncheon to celebrate Henry being there. I mean, he was famous. Henry went to the luncheon, and he looked around, and Trevor wasn't there. He asked the hospital administrators where Trevor was, and they said, oh, we don't invite people like Trevor to big luncheons like this. Henry said, well, if Trevor doesn't come here, I'm, I'm going to leave. 
So they went and got Trevor and they brought him to the big luncheon. Well, at the luncheon, Henry was seated at, seated at a table and all of a sudden he looks over and Trevor jumps up and Trevor starts singing, if you're happy and you know it, raise your glass. If you're happy and you know it, raise your glass. Well, everybody was totally silent. Nobody knew what to do. And Henry raised his glass, and he started singing, if you're happy and you know it, raise your glass. Pretty soon, every one of the people at the luncheon raised their glass and started singing, if you're happy and you know it, raise your glass. Wow. Jesus didn't come to the dinner party here today. Party. And Jesus wanted everyone invited to this party. That's because life is not about being the best or sitting in the best seat. But life is about celebrating with Jesus and with others around you. We have a lot to celebrate today because of Jesus. We have forgiveness of all of our sins because Jesus died on the cross. We have the assurance of eternal life in heaven because Jesus rose from the dead. And you can celebrate that with people around you. You know, every week we get to celebrate with people here in our worship celebrations, don't we? Every week we get the joy of celebrating together. Invite somebody to come and be part of the celebration. Who knows how they will be blessed by being here. Enjoy our worship celebrations. Enjoy your celebrations with people. And look at life as one big celebration with Jesus on this earth. God bless you as you do. Amen. Let's now stand as we join together in the next song of prayer.